I want to make something very clear from the off. The iPhone SE is not out to compete with the K30 Pros of the world or become the next flagship killer. What it is, is the perfect upgrade for current iPhone 6 and iPhone 6S users whose phones are becoming slow, failing in the battery life department and taking really rather rubbish photos. I'd be interested in creating a detailed comparison between both of those phones, but let me know in the comments if you'd like to see something like that or if you think it's just been played out way too many times recently. Otherwise, hey guys, I'm Ryan Thomas and this is the iPhone SE 2020 review. Externally, the SE, which is what I'm going to be referring it to from here onward, is essentially an iPhone 8. That means that all your old cases and screen protectors will fit and you get a healthy selection of modern bits and bobs. The device is built out of aluminium and glass, wireless charging is of course available as it was with the 8 and Touch ID is back and better than ever. I very much appreciate this Touch ID implementation because as cool as in-display fingerprint scanners are, they don't tend to be as quick or as reliable as capacitive ones like the one in the iPhone SE, and I'm also a bit meh on Face ID. It works sometimes, but it doesn't work when you want to just pull the phone out of your pocket and have it unlocked straight away because obviously it needs to see your face. The SE feels light, small, easy to use with one hand, and it will easily fit into the smallest of pockets. It also won't become overbearing when you put a decent case on it. It's refreshing coming to that from bigger screen phones that kind of feel a little bit annoying to use just because you can't reach everywhere with one hand, just for the sake of extra screen. I'm rather fond of these 16 by nine squared off panels, Rounded corners aren't quite at the level of refinement that I'd like because in a lot of games and other full screen applications, there tends to be some UI elements that get cut off with rounded corners and I think the more widely rounded corners can look a little bit cartoony, so having this properly squared off old fashioned design is nice, especially for me. The SE does indeed come with IP67 water and dust resistance, which is a huge improvement over the non-protected 6 series, though the lack of a headphone port will annoy many. I've personally moved on to wireless earphones for my mobile devices, but it can be annoying when you get into a car, hopefully not at the moment, uh, that requires an aux kind of cable and doesn't have Bluetooth, and it can be the same for home hi-fi setups and surround sound kind of things. You can't generally do that with Bluetooth, or at least you have to buy adapters to do that, whereas with an old-fashioned headphone port, it's usually there. The 4.7 inch 750p IPS display is good enough for most things. There's nothing wrong with IPS displays when you get them right, and Apple has got this one right. They're less prone to burn in, they're cheaper to implement bringing device costs down, they give better viewing angles and they can get plenty bright too. Coming from a bigger phone, of course, the SE isn't as great for watching films or long form video content, but the 16x9 form factor means that most YouTube videos, ironically excluding this one, run without black bars on the top or the bottom. And the hybrid speakers in these modern phones are great too, with the earpiece amplified to create a stereo effect. The one omission that pains me a little bit is 3D touch, as that's something that I used a lot on my iPhone 10 and I used a bit on the iPhone 8 Plus that I got to use. It was something I enjoyed and I got annoyed that they took it away with the iPhone 11, but they have also taken it away with the SE and they've not brought that back. It doesn't look like that kind of technology is coming back to iPhones anytime soon. Battery life has been a very controversial topic for the iPhone SE, and with a battery coming in at just over 1800 mAh, it was never going to be groundbreaking. But here's the thing, people, iPhone 6, 6S users, including me back in the day, we were getting like a full day of use out of our iPhones, and to see someone not get a full day on a more efficient and slightly larger battery on the iPhone SE doesn't seem to make much sense. Now I get that there are gonna be people out there who use their phone an awful lot, with a lot of Bluetooth connections, cellular connections, lots of mobile browsing, lots of screen on, maybe even some gaming as well, and it's not gonna be as good for that. But yeah, remember that we back in the day managed to get a full day out of our six and six S's, so I wouldn't see why that would be a problem with the SE given the other factors. Between that, the 18 watt fast charging provided you by that extra plug because it's not in the box, 
and the wireless charging, I'd say that battery life is going to be just about enough for its target audience. That said, it would have been nice to get at least a 2000 mAh battery and maybe a slightly thicker phone, but that wouldn't have worked because the iPhone SE is a parts bin phone, made from kind of older stuff that was used in the iPhone 8. It means that Apple didn't have to spend money developing and therefore up the cost of the phone. They were able to use an older design and basically revitalize something that had already been sold before. And with that all in mind, you couldn't really fit a bigger battery in that phone in the first place. So it's understandable why it's the size that it is. The add-on to the iPhone 8 design is the performance hardware, which has been bumped up to essentially what I have in my iPhone 11. It's an A13 Bionic and three gigabytes of RAM. Performance is as good as you could expect from a flagship in 2020. It's pretty much flawless. This is one of the fastest chips going, and between this and iOS's performance optimization, it's just a recipe for speed. I didn't experience a single hiccup with the iPhone SE in the time that I used it. And that's not something I can say about any other 450 pound phone that I've ever used, uh, bar the OnePlus 3, which actually launched at 309 pounds, but that thing was absolutely flawless. Moving on to the cameras, this is where the biggest jump from an iPhone 6 comes in. Tying in with the performance, of course. We've got iPhone 8 camera hardware with iPhone 11 camera software. This means that there's no dedicated ultra wide or telephoto cameras, but some great HDR and portrait mode tech. Night mode is an omission that I can't quite make sense of since it doesn't seem to require any multiple camera array. So everything seems to be there on paper, but there we are. The image quality is up there with some of the better phones in the price range. Not as good as the Pixel 3a in my opinion, but then it's a Pixel, so it kind of makes sense. The iPhone's versatility isn't quite up there, also with the likes of the Realme 6 Pro or anything like that, because it doesn't have those other lenses, but the realism of the photos from the iPhone is way better than the overprocessed mess that tends to come out of those cheaper phones. Colors are realistic, dynamic range is impressive, no overly contrasty images here, which is good to see. I like the lack of scene optimization too. That stuff tends to get way too overdone and yeah, it tends to look a mess once again. The sharpness is also pretty great. It's kind of like what you'd get from an iPhone 11's main camera, which is to say pretty good, but not quite as good as a Pixel or a Huawei or a Samsung S series camera. Then there's this awful handling of the skin tones. You can always tell when an iPhone has taken a photo because it just looks unrealistic and fake and awful. I avoid taking selfies at all costs with any modern iPhone because of this. It also lifts the brightness of your iris to make you look a bit like a demon. I don't know if anyone else has experienced this, but it's just from anecdotal evidence. Portrait mode is okay, but it's not Pixel 3a level. It's nice and smooth, decently sharp, and thanks to that uber powerful A13 Bionic chip, live HDR is present and correct. It's one of the best benefits of having such a powerful chip. Remember right at the start of the video where I spoke about how the iPhone SE was the perfect iPhone 6 or iPhone 6S upgrade? Well, that's what it is. And if I haven't proven that to you in this video, then clearly I'm doing something wrong. But uh, yeah, it's not the sort of phone that a lot of Android fanboys, I'm, I'm not saying that everyone's an Android fanboy, but a lot of the people will just look at specs and they'll see a, a powerful processor and they'll go, okay, well, it could be used for gaming, but because the battery's bad, it's not gonna be able to game very well. Or they might look at a phone like this and not see a lot of features. There's no 1080p screen, there's no OLED screen, no fast refresh rate screen, only two cameras versus, you know, four or five that you might see on another camera, the battery's not big, all this kind of stuff. Uh, but that just isn't really what this is for. This is not for someone who's out there looking for a 400 pound phone. It's someone like my mum, who I am actually giving this phone to, uh, who had an iPhone 6 and it's not working great anymore. It's not fast. It's, it, you know, it barely lasts a day on a charge and they want an, an upgrade, something that's gonna be better, that's not gonna be as bad, that's gonna take better photos, but doesn't wanna to have to learn a whole new form factor as to change the muscle memory, who has a different layout uh, to, to kind of learn. That it's all there, it's all the same. If I, if I put a case on the 6 and I put a case on the SE, my mum would probably find a hard time telling the difference in terms of what she's got there but she can tell a massive difference in terms of the speed, in terms of the much fewer crashes and obviously better photos. It's for that audience. 
Anyway, I'm going to leave this review here. If you enjoyed it, please do hit like, please hit subscribe. Otherwise, hit dislike and tell me in the comments what you think about uh, this video. Was it too kind of drawn out? Was it not didn't, didn't cover what you wanted me to cover? Or was it a bit too uh, talky? Because I've been pretty talky recently. Like a 1.9 TDI kind of talky. Also want to give a massive shout out to my patrons for being continually supportive. Really appreciate you guys. Uh, so yeah, I've been Ryan Thomas and I'll see you later. Peace.